Nation. This is episode 9 of Torn Freak TV. Sadly, we have to start with very disappointing news. You probably know that four people from the Pirate Bay have been fighting in court to prove that operating the Pirate Bay is not a crime. Well, sadly for them and for the whole Torrent community, they have been found guilty. They have each been ordered to pay 905,000 US dollars and sentenced to one year in prison. The court stated that the four worked as a team and that they were aware of the copyrighted material being shared using the Pirate Bay. The judge said that the users of the Pirate Bay committed the first offense by sharing the files, yet the four assisted them. Nobody knew exactly what was going to happen, but I think nobody expected a year in prison and $3.6 million fine. Suspiciously though, the verdict leaked into the public more than an hour before the official verdict was due, which makes the whole thing sound even stranger. We have also come to the conclusion that uh, uh, as a consequence of the crime, that the four persons have been found guilty, they are liable to pay compensation to the music and film industry with a considerable amount of money, uh, which amounts to uh, uh, 30 million Swedish crowns. You are probably just like me, wondering what will happen with the Pirate Bay website. Well, Peter Sunde has explained that this decision does not mean the end of the site and that they will appeal the verdict, which means that this might not be resolved for years. When and if ever, um do you actually get put behind bars? Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I'm still quite confident that the higher up you go in, in the Swedish court system, the more fair judgment you'll get. And no one can say that this is a fair judgment. This is definitely not a fair judgment, even if it would be illegal, which we really claim that it's not. And we really have read the law surrounding this. And we have the top lawyers in Sweden, and they can't understand that this is a crime either. So. Even if it was a crime, jail time is so stupid because this is, when it comes to the uh, copyright issues, mm -hmm. uh, that's a civil complaint and you can't get jail time really for civil, civil stuff. This is horrible news, not just for BitTorrent, but also for ISPs, which might now find themselves liable for enabling users to download copyrighted material, which just seems stupid. I mean, why don't we go against car manufacturing companies because their cars kill thousands of people every year because the driver did not follow the speed limit? What? Not the same thing? Yes, it is. The car company made the car that can be used to follow the rules or break them. It's not up to the car company, though, to police their drivers. On a more happy and entertaining side, one of the Pirate Bay servers that was confiscated by the police in 2006 was bought by the Swedish National Museum of Science and Technology and will be displayed in the section of the museum dedicated to machines and inventions that have changed people's lives. Also, a movie clip from an upcoming movie about the Pirate Bay called TVB AFK has supposedly leaked onto the internet. I think that this is intentional, but that's just my opinion. Let's look at the clip. Men vi kan leda till en gång med de 64. Ja, och för en så väljer vi ett slumptal mellan 100 och 52 000. Och på svenska. Sen tar man kvadrater och för det så ser man hur mycket man ska kosta. Ja. In the last episode, we reported that France is the only country in the European Union with the three strikes law. The law has been heavily criticized and well, I was happy to realize that just after I talked about this, the law was rejected. But don't get too excited. The rejection was supposed to have happened by mistake and it should be in effect again on April 29th. If you live in the United States, it is hard to believe that you don't know what Hulu is. And if you don't live in the United States or you don't know what Hulu is, then let me tell you. It is a place where people can watch TV shows free and legally. Well, all of you music fans, rejoice. YouTube and Universal Music Group have teamed up to create a site like Hulu, but for music. Of course, the name has to be short and cute, so they'll call it Vivo.com. 
Vivo, when it launches, will offer a premium music video content. Understand how Hulu can get away with short ads, but if they make me watch and add every music video, then I'll just stick to YouTube. Oh, and Vuz is already offering a similar service. BBC decided to slowly start putting some of their shows online. They have started with a show called R&D TV, and it is licensed under Creative Commons, which means everybody is able to redistribute and remix the show. And to make everything even better, they are planning to distribute the show over BitTorrent in the future. Man and wife have been accused of a humiliating crime. We often hear that people get arrested by going to the movie theaters and recording the movie with a video camera, and I kind of feel sorry for them. But there's no way I can feel sorry for this couple. They have been caught illegally videotaping Hannah Montana, the movie. And since we're talking about camcorders, I have received a hint how one of the cam movie release groups is able to get higher quality sound for their releases. Instead of capturing the sound from a movie theater, they go to the drive-in and find the frequency at which the sound is being broadcasted and just simply record it. I'm wondering why nobody thought of this before. The person that submitted this info will receive a t-shirt like promised in the last episode. He did not want his name to be public though, so I'll respect that. A 22-year-old man from Spain has been sentenced to 6 months jail time and 4,900 euros fine. He was accused of operating a file sharing website infopsp.com which was offering links to PSP games. In Spain, it is legal to provide links to copyrighted works if it is not done for profit or commercial gain. But unfortunately for this guy, they found out that he was making money from advertisers like Google AdSense. Miramax, the studio behind Adventureland, might have been trying a new advertising strategy amongst the pirates. A girl was twittering about Adventureland and asking why there are no torrents available for this movie yet. Surprisingly for her, she got a direct response from Miramax saying, Come on Amanda, don't do it. Amanda wanted to joke right back at them and responded with saying, Okay, I won't, just for you. But to her surprise, she got another reply from Miramax. This time they offered her two tickets for Adventureland for being such a good sport. Good marketing strategy, Miramax. On the Colbert Report, Phil Bronstein, a newspaper editor, went on a talk show to talk about how newspapers are dying because of the internet, and he went on to say that websites like Google or AOL need to start paying newspapers for their news. Yeah, I know, who cares about what he has to say, right? Well, listen to this stupid comment. Well, the short answer is yes. I mean, iTunes were a little different because if you weren't paying, you were going to go to jail. Wait. If I wasn't paying, I'd go to jail? Oh great, have a newspaper editor talking about news that never happened. I hope they never pay you, since obviously you have no idea what you're talking about. It's time for our quick app review. Today let's look at Tribler. Tribler is a project that's being developed by smart scientists at P2P Next Project, which is funded by the European Union. Triver offers a fully distributed search, which also means that torrents come from within the network, making sites like Mininova or IsoHunt a thing from the past. Their aim is to make peer-to-peer -peer easy to use and control and eventually include it in television. The new version of the application offers a nicer user interface and other tweaks. The new application is available for Windows, Macs, and Ubuntu. Do you remember me speaking about the new X-Men movie being leaked onto the internet? Well, if you don't, here's a quick reminder. Sadly for the movie industry, the movie has leaked onto the internet a month prior to its release and it has become a big hit on torrent websites. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about, right? I am introducing a new segment of our show called Your Words. This is going to be a segment dedicated to you, the viewer, or more like what you have to say. And, not to keep you waiting too long, here is our viewer's comment on the X-Men leak. I don't think it's a bad thing that Wolverine was leaked. Uh, in fact, I think it's going to be a really good test for the movie to see how it does now. Uh, since this was only a work print, you know, uh, I think if it's good, people will still want to go see the full version in theaters, you know, and pay for it. So I don't really think uh, it's going to lose anything in terms of profit or success. Um, perhaps it'll even generate more interest just because uh, this uh, leak has been, you know, discussed so many times now. Mm. Plus, you know, it's kind of an interesting version for all the X-Men enthusiasts and fans. Like, uh, an incomplete, you know, bootleg, so I don't think it's really that bad at all. Uh, in fact, I think if it's good, uh, Wolverine has nothing to be afraid of at all. Thank you for that. 
If you want to somehow contribute to the show, may it be video or some other way, email us at tv at tornfreak.com, and I'm sure we can find something that you can help us with. Also, I decided in the future we will be giving away a t-shirt to the best viewer submitted content. You are more than welcome to help us make the show better. Don't forget to subscribe to one of our feeds. Until next time, I will make sure I'm here and you make sure you don't get caught. Stacia out.